everyone. I figured since I'm a complete chainsaw novice, a complete total newbie beginner. I mean, I grew up I grew up around chainsaws. My dad used them, but I haven't used one in probably at least 35 years. I figured I could just kind of share with everybody what I'm learning as I'm learning it, and maybe there's another complete newbie out there that would find this useful. So I'll just uh, tell you a little bit about what I got, why I got it, and um, what the instructions were that were given to me in terms of how to use this. But for now, I'll just kind of show you what am I starting with. All right, first, we're gonna start with the chainsaw itself. So I bought a steel chainsaw. Uh, I was looking at what to buy and I wasn't sure which brands were the best. You know, it looked like Husqvarna was good, looked like steel was good. Well, I'm going to be living out in the mountains at some point. And around here, we've got a town about 20, 25 minutes away that has not one, but two steel dealerships in hardware stores. I'm gonna be depending on them for maintenance and for other gadgets and other things. So I figured it just made sense to go with what's here. So that's why I chose steel. It's, it's known to be a very high quality chainsaw, but it's also gonna be convenient to hear. So what I've got here is the uh, steel. It's a MS-251 and has an 18 inch bar. And this seemed like a good idea. So the questions that you wanna ask yourself when you're looking at a chainsaw are how much am I going to be using it and what am I going to be using it on? For instance, if you live in a, in a housing division and you're just going to be using this from time to time to trim up little things or to, you know, limb some trees or to just maybe every now and then cut up some firewood, you're not going to need this. Like this has got a little bit more power, but this is also not like a huge professional motor. So this is kind of like a tweener. It was described to me as the notch below what a professional would buy. Uh, for what I'm going to be using it. So I'm using it. I have a mountain property here. There's woods everywhere and there's going to be down trees to deal with. Um, I'm going to be cutting down some trees today. They're ash trees that had the beetle infestation and I want to try to harvest those for firewood. And those are at least 20 inches in diameter, probably 20 to 24 inches. Uh, so you're going to need something with some power to cut through that and uh, a little bit of size on the bar. I didn't want something so huge that I couldn't wield it on smaller things. So that's what informed my decision-making process on the chainsaw. The way this was described to me is that there are two things that are not covered under warranty from the chainsaw manufacturer. The first one is the pull cord. And the reason why is that most people want to pick it up and drop and pull at the same time. It's apparently called a drop start. Uh, and they just, apparently if you're just going to break it all the time, they're not going to cover it. So I was told that you really got to start it with a burp start, which is flat on the ground. You yank this a couple times cold until you hear a little burping noise, you set the choke, and then you go ahead and start it up. But you never want to do two things at the same time like this. The other one was the carburetor in there. And so that leads me to the first bit of maintenance advice that I got. And it's really simple. To keep the carburetor intact and one functioning well, you need to have the right blend of fuel, which is a, a blend of, uh, of oil for the engine and high octane gasoline. And gasoline doesn't last very long. So the gasolation for the pump is going to last anywhere from like, you know, 30 to 45 to 60 days. And then it starts to break down and those breakdown particles, whatever they are, uh, apparently get into the carburetor and uh, gum it up and ruin it. When you're done with it, if you're not going to use it for, say, three weeks, what you want to do is take this, which is the pre-blended fuel, and you want to uh, first drain out all the leftover fuel that's in there put some of this in there and then run the chainsaw just on idle for about 10 minutes just to circle cycle this through everything so it's nice and clean uh, and uh, ready for uh, some longer term storage or mid-range storage. So definitely do this before, you know, at the end of the season, but uh, you also wanna do it if you're not gonna use your chainsaw for a few weeks. Now for regular usage, you're gonna wanna use regular gas station gas. Uh, you wanna use the high octane stuff, the 93 if you can get it, 89 if you can't. And uh, what you do is you blend it with this product here. This is the engine oil. And uh, you just uh, fill up, I filled up a gallon of gas because I'm not sure even yet how much this, uh, this is gonna use. And uh, so I fill it with a gallon and then I'll place one of these and mix it in there. And then you got your mix and that's what I'll use today. The other pre-made stuff is a little pricey. So you don't wanna necessarily do that all the time. But you wanna have it on hand for engine maintenance. Okay, and the last thing I got was the safety and protective gear. So I've got gloves and these are thermal for winter use. 
I've got these chaps. These are made with uh, Kevlar. And uh, what they do apparently is stop the chain from moving. And I've grown really attached to my legs. Apparently, like skips and knocks happen. So you're going to want to have these around if you want to not lose something that you really want. Also, a helmet with some ear protectors. And I got a mesh visor. You can also get a clear plastic visor or a uh, smoke visor. It's a tinted one. So I'll be using this too. Apparently, the, uh, the biggest safety concern with the chainsaw that's going to happen at some point is the chainsaw is going to kick back at you. The top, the end of the chainsaw is going to catch on something. It's just going to knock it right back up to you. So helmet and visor are good. Uh, the chainsaw does have a handbrake, so it tries to keep that from happening, but better to be safe. You know, this tool is pretty cool. These guides make sure that you're sharpening, you're not like turning over the edges on your on your saw blade. It really guides it really nicely. So you gotta, this is the chainsaw itself, and then this is the direction you're supposed to be using it. So you get that lined up, and these guides keep it from wasting any of your blade, it just keeps it right in the right direction. <clears throat> Figured out this morning, it's really good to do this with gloves on, so you don't end up like nicking up your hands. <laughs> Rookie move stupid. This was the first weekend of me using a chainsaw as a complete novice and complete beginner. Uh, hugely educational. I learned so much. I learned how to operate just normal operation of the chainsaw. I learned how to maintain it. I explained that to you guys at the start of the weekend. Since then throughout we've had a number of things go wrong. We had the chain slip off. We had the blade get stuck a couple times. Once pinched by a very large tree and the other time pinched by a very large stump. And we had to figure out how to get ourselves out of that. You know, we made mistakes with the fuel that we had to correct. Uh, we had to sharpen the chainsaw a number of times. So I learned how to do that. Like, these are all essential things. You know, this isn't the kind of thing that is just going to run flawlessly all the time. And it's good to meet some of the challenges that you're going to see and be able to get past them and continue on and do the job that you came to do, which was to butt up that, uh, that tree. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please saw off that like button and please subscribe to our channel. Uh, it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.